In times past, if you were unable to receive or transmit on an ANPRC 77 radio set, the initial action was to lift it to a height of approximately one metre and then drop it. Nowadays, they tell you some bullshit about turning things off and on again. As history repeats itself, does this mean we will see a generation of people struggling with in-game comms who pick their PCs up and drop them? Or is that just a laptop thing? In World War II, the early German Blitzkrieg, with tank and armoured formations, placed a new order of importance on reliable radio communication. The development of the air, infantry, artillery and armoured team created new requirements for split-second communication by radio amongst all members. Portable radio sets were provided as far down in the military echelons as the platoon. In every tank, there was at least one radio, and in some command tanks, as many as three. Multi-conductor cables were provided wire communications, and they could be reeled out rapidly, and as many as four conversations could take place on them simultaneously through the use of carrier telephony. Radio relay, born of the necessity for mobility, became the outstanding communication development of World War II. Sets employing frequency modulation and carrier techniques were developed and used, as were radio relay sets that used radar, pulse transmission and reception techniques and multiplex time division methods for obtaining many voice channels from one radio carrier. Radio relay telephone and teletypewriter circuits spanned the English Channel for the Normandy landings. In a perfect world, everything I present to you in this video would be me demonstrating how awesome I am at communications. But in reality, I am but a mere human, and this is but a mere game. And this video has probably taken about a hundred outtakes before I got it right. So, I figured it would be useful to show you what I think is needed to improve one's gameplay. I've split it into a few categories, and you'll see them in the comments section, so please feel free to skip ahead if you need to. But, as always, this is a package video, so I encourage a right proper viewing from start to finish. Watch now for a correct demonstration of how to be good at comms, right? Firstly, the basics. I'm going to use the word comms a lot, and for the uninitiated it means communications. Veteran players can probably skip to the next segment here. At your disposal are three comms channels depending on what role you've taken. Your keybinds are set to the X key if you are in the commander or officer roles and that will display as red text in the bottom left corner or yellow text if you are in the commander's seat. The C key for squad chat and this is for your individual squad. It's isolated to your squad and it can be either if you're in the officer or any other role in that squad and it's green text in the bottom left corner. The V key for proximity chat, and that's going to reach out to any friendly player within about 50 metres, I believe. I'd have to check that. And it's white text in the bottom left corner. You also have access to some in-game sound and voice settings that will work out most of the time once you've set them up. Except for that one person who doesn't like your sound levels, causing you to dick around with it for 10 minutes just to get it back to where you were before. You naturally also will have a microphone and speakers, or a headset and microphone, to do the talky-talky stuff. You are going to have to play around with the in-game settings to get your sound right. You've got to find that balance between being able to hear other players speaking, being able to hear enemies sneaking around nearby, and to not having your ears bleed when a plane flies over or a tank shoots next to you. Note my settings here, they're what I want. But remember, I film, so I've adjusted the booms and pew pews accordingly. Getting your settings right is fairly important in the comms piece. In amongst all of the explosions and people chatting, maybe that one piece of information that helps you avoid walking into a trap, or coming across an enemy tank with nothing more than a pistol and good wishes and mindless optimism. Microphone volume is also a touchy subject. Some folks are either too loud or too quiet so politely let them know. It's a blend of system settings, for example Windows, as well as an in-game level. And the in-game level here of 60 to 
seems to work for most people. I've probably taught comms lectures a few dozen times over the years in the military, and the absolute truth is that theory is great, in theory, but when shit and fan combine at great velocity, well, you know how that ends up. Bad comms in this game is wide-ranging, similar to real life, and generally falls somewhere in amongst the following examples. First one is over-communicating, where one person likes to pass on every frigging detail on everything from enemy locations to the flowers they just walked past. The second one is confusing comms, a classic example being where you're fighting in a forest and someone in the squad tells you there's an enemy behind that tree. No comms. Either a squad mate who doesn't work with the squad and doesn't speak, or a squad mate who doesn't speak but you're damn sure they're there because you can hear from their keyboard and the heavy breathing usually found in horror movies. Then you've got dodgy comms, which is a common issue with opposable thumb primates that haven't yet worked out hold the transmit button in for the duration of their vocal activity. Then you've got irrelevant comms. So you drank something and you needed to burp. Congratulations, I can do that too, but I don't need to transmit it to the freaking world. Go make an Instagram video on your burping or something. And then just the general being a dick in comms, which is kind of like half the internet. You know them, I can even name a few of them. They're the ones who attract the in-game mute functionality the most. So that's where you go into the menu, find their name, and click the little three things next to their name. You can mute the fuckers. Pardon my French. I've only ever muted two people in this game, and they absolutely deserved it, and I felt good afterwards. Now, I'm no angel. I have absolutely been guilty of some of these, and perhaps occasionally am still guilty of one or two <coughs> over communicating. <coughs> I had plenty of examples of all of this stuff I just listed, but I didn't think it was fair to actually demonstrate that because it did take me too much stuff and around to edit their names out and you could recognize people's voices and stuff. So I decided not to name and shame people and I didn't include those as demos, but God, I had so many demos of all of this stuff. Now you might think that that's a bit of a negative that there's so many demos, but look, that's just real life. I've got a great real life military example. It's where we have, um, when, when I used to be an instructor, we used to watch trainee officers and NCOs learn practical leadership in a field environment. And they had to specifically demonstrate skills in troop management and welfare. Now one aspect is making sure that your troops have been drinking enough water, you know, hydration. Each person in a leadership position, you know, like the lieutenant, the sergeant, the corporal, the lance corporal, will all try and impress the instructors and will run around asking their team members if they've had enough to drink. Probably once every 30 to 60 minutes, especially, you know, when they're doing heavy work. And I once watched one poor bugger get asked about a dozen times in the space of an hour, so about every five minutes, whether or not he'd been drinking enough water. After about the tenth time, he was ready to ram a water bottle down someone's neck. Yep, it's a bit of an anecdotal story, but it's inter interesting enough for this video because real life happens everywhere. This game is no exception. So what does good comms, do good comms, look like? Here are a few opinions, I'll stress that, opinions for consideration. First of all, learn to balance the usage of the X, C and V keys. That's layered comms. And what I'm talking about there is where you communicate at the lowest level first. So I would suggest, as you can see, there's lots of white writing. That means people are using the proximity chat or the V key function to talk in that general area. What it does, it takes away some of the pressure of over communicating in the other two channels, particularly for squad leaders who are trying to listen to squad chat and command chat at the same time. So if you're a couple of squad members and um, you know you know your officer in your squad is suffering a bit from excessive command chat going on, use the V key and talk in local and that way it saves that person a little bit of stress. The second one is learn clap. And yes, I can hear a whole heap of people's eyes rolling right now. That's clear, loud, as an order and pause. Why is this? Because it's how we do it in the real world and it works. So an example, my target indication example for this game. Contact, bearing 250, range 50 meters. You can see that's pretty clear, and it's deliberate the way I spoke it. Contact, bearing 250, range 50 meters. 
But what you do then is you ping the spot, and you ping the spot a couple of times if necessary, including before your target indication if you can't actually guess the distance quick enough. Um, the combined communication, target indication, and the ping will get your gang on target pretty quickly. Although you can get away with talking too much in squad chat when you're but a mere squad member, people can mute you, squad leader can kick you and so on, if you talk too much in command chat then you're just going to piss people off. The chatty commander or squad leader is the person who dominates a chat channel at the expense of anyone else being able to get a word in or being able to talk on other channels. So it's so challenging to brief your squad when your commander won't shut up or that squad leader in another squad who has to tell you every little detail about the tank icon they just put on the map. Great mate. I've even muted a commander before. I couldn't, none of us could get a word in edgeways. It was just pointless. And I muted a squad leader too who wouldn't shut up about how much he was doing and how bad everyone else apparently sucked. Oh, the fucking ego on that guy was amazing. Squad leaders should also pay attention to how much they talk in squad chat. Balanced communications, not con continuous comms or a, a continuous spray, or you'll end up with a herd of cats who rightly don't care what you say. Plus, part of your leadership role is to observe the map and the flow of battle. And you can't do that very well if you're talking the whole damn time. In line with these thoughts, orders to your troops, as a commander or a squad leader, need to be delivered and then executed. So a simple way of doing this is to drop a couple of markers on the map and advise your team of, or your squad of your plan, uh, like an example here. All right, lads, I've just dropped Thanks. a move and an attack marker. If you could move to the move and then attack through along that line, please. Roger. And we'll hold that side of route. Guys, my squad Probably. will hold the Echo Love 5 the side of Rue. <laughs> you need it in this game. So here we can see that I've given orders, the squads acknowledge the orders, and now we can get on with fighting and communicating targets to each other and all that good stuff. I can also keep an ear on the command channel for further orders from the commander, like orders to redeploy for urgent defence and stuff like that. Operating multiple comms channels at the same time is actually a real-life skill. Many military folks have had this experience, myself included, where we have three or four radios on the go monitoring different radio networks and have to receive and transmit information as well as record conversations. It also gets pretty real in contact situations when you're on the radio and your section is trading lead with the enemy. The general opinion is radio operations can get hectic. In this game, I personally don't struggle with comms at all because of this real-life experience. But that doesn't mean that I don't get annoyed at the comms channel sometimes, or that I don't make mistakes that bug others. This video is designed to help you think about the bigger picture in communications, and what effect your actions may have on others in the game. Don't be the person who's giving orders every 20 seconds, or asking your squad every couple of minutes if they've had a drink of water. You may well find your team will send you some spare ammunition at speed. As always, time for some random footage that hopefully demonstrates some good comms and maybe some areas for improvement. I hope you enjoy it. Okay, they're going to cap that so we can probably put a um, IP uh, garrison up here. Just back here, man, just back here. Just here for supplies. Then uh, head on in and kill stuff, I guess. Awesome. We'll defend the um, left side of the echo column, guys. George Squad's going to defend the left side of Echo Column. So Echo 5, keypad 4, keypad 1. Exactly where you're running to.
Garrison's up at Echo 4 too, guys. Use that. Our AP's down behind the bushes, lads. Enemy infantry, aircraft, Echo 6. Watch Echo 6, enemy infantry at that aircraft. Tank marker on I is second. Do we have a command yet? Enemy tank marked. Enemy tank marked. Enemy tank marked. What is it? Uh, Echo five keypad. Three and it looks like a panther and a Luke's. I, I can't take it. I'm only a Stuart. He's moving. Infantry, uh, infantry marked as well. That tank's on the run, boys. Be careful. on my mark. Tank's down, well done. Any, yeah, any Puma's down. There's a Puma, not a Panther. I've got uh, any... Oh, shit. Hello. There we go. There's a Panther there, mate. Trust me. Yeah, no, he just came into the field. Um, the end of our hitch, 200 squad loot. Foxtrot yeah. marker is accurate for enemy tank. He's in the field. Get your Charlie eyes out this side. accurate for enemy tank, G6. Get your eyes out this side. There's an alpha marker there too. Get into them, mate. There's lots of them in this. Hey, I watch out on that southwest side. 